stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. on my one it's a uh, cut out the big one. Oh yeah. So
Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see your smiling faces this morning. Are you all well? Well, we're going to, as people are arriving, we're going to uh, sing a song, um, Who Alone Could Save Themselves? And the other title for this is You Alone Can Rescue. So if you want to join in with this, please do. I'm supposed to repeat that again, so we'll go the second time. Yeah. Who, oh Lord, could save themselves? Their own soul could heal. Our shame was deeper than the sea. Your grace is deeper still. You alone can rescue. It's good to be able to uh, sing songs of praise when we come to worship together. And that's one of the joys of being in this place. It's good to also to be able to, to celebrate with those who can't join us physically and perhaps will be watching this on the recording uh, later on today. So welcome to you as you uh, listen to our service this morning. Well, we come together and we're thinking today about uh, listening 
listening to the voice of the shepherd. And I wonder if we can just uh, think about how good are we at really at listening? How good are we at listening? Because Jesus says in our gospel reading that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And that's a challenge which I suppose we all have to think about. So as we gather to worship, I pray that we can, we can be encouraged in that. I'm just trying to find my iPad because I've got my... Uh, service on here as well. So a special welcome to you all this morning as we do come together. And we'll have come from different places and we'll have different emotions. Some of us I think are having birthdays today, aren't they Jane? Yes. (laughs) Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jane. Happy birthday to you. Congratulations. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, we're here this morning to, to celebrate together as the church family. And we can worship God seven days of the week. It's not just when we come here for the hour, an hour and a half, or whatever it is on a Sunday morning. But this is like a drawing together at the beginning of the new week for us. And so as we do that, let's uh, uh, use these these words of gathering as we recognize we're in God's presence this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. risen Alleluia, because we're still in that season of Easter. The psalmist says, one thing I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. And we're going to gaze on the eyes of the Lord as we sing this wonderful hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. So would you, if you're able to and willing to, stand as we sing this lovely hymn. Joy. 
Christ and the humble poor believe. Hallelujah! What a wonderful hymn, isn't it? We can sing God's praise together this morning. So as we gather together, let's pray this prayer. Loving God, we've come to worship you. Help us to have to sing your praise with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we do that, we want to put ourselves right with one another and also with God. So we sit or we kneel, whichever is most comfortable for you, as we prepare to bring those things before God that we need to confess to him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 reminds us that what God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed it to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord who has prepared good things for those who love him. Who is it that you seek? And after this sentence, there'll be a short time of reflection. Do you seek him with all your heart? Let me say together, Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Let me say together, Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? And we say, Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? And we say together, Amen. Lord, have mercy. So to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed that you have come, we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of Christ, of God. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Amen. And we say together this Thanksgiving prayer. Thank you that you love us beyond measure. Encourage us to grow deeper in relationship with you and to empower us to live and witness to you. May we be filled with fresh with this new day to follow you more closely, to share your love with those around us. We worship you in gladness. 
Amen. And so we do continue in worship. Again, if you'd like to sta stand uh, to join us in that, do please do. Everyone needs compassion, a recognition of the, the fact that we do need to come before God. Thank you that you did go to the cross and you raised, were raised from the dead. And because of that, we know that we are set free. And what an amazing message that is of your love and your grace for us. That amazing grace, how sweet the sound that sets us free.
was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the trust in you because you are forever ours and we are always yours you will never let us go you'll never cast us off when we find that grace and that love in you in Jesus name amen please be seated As we prepare to hear God's words, uh, the special prayer for this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of the, the Father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now, um, Paul, I think, is going to lead us, read us our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The first reading is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 36. 
in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, in Greek, Dorcas, meaning gazelle, who filled her days with acts of kindness and charity. At that time, she fell ill and died, and they washed her body and laid it in a room upstairs. As Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who had heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the urgent request, please come over to us without delay. At once, Peter went off with them. When he arrived, he was taken up to the room and all the widows came and stood round him in tears, showing him the shirts and coats that Dorcas used to make while she was with them. Peter sent them all outside and knelt down and prayed. Then, turning towards the body, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and saw Peter and sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called together the members of the church and the widows and showed her to them alive. News of it spread all over Joppa, and many became to believe in the Lord. Peter stayed on in Joppa for some time at the house of a tanner named Simon. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Paul. A very powerful reading of the way in which Peter, as one of the apostles, continued the ministry that Christ had continued, doing the sort of things that Jesus was doing. And we'll be thinking a, bit, a little bit about that in my talk. But uh, our gospel reading, which Muir is going to read to us in a moment, uh, is all about uh, us listening to the voice, or the, she the sheep of, of, of God listening to, to the voice of the shepherd. And we're going to sing... Um, the Lord's my shepherd, and this is the version that um, has become quite popular in this church. Um, the Lord's my shepherd, but uh, talking about I will trust, I will trust in you. Stop. 
Jesus, we just pray that you would help us to grow more to be able to trust you. Wherever we are in our journey of understanding who you are and what you've done for us, we pray that you would help us to take a new step following you, trusting in your lead. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please remain standing and Muriel is going to read to us our gospel reading. Hear the Gospel according to John. You can find the Gospel on page 89 of the Pew Bible, and it begins uh, at chapter 10, verse 22 of John's Gospel. It was winter, and the festival of dedication was being held in Jerusalem. As Jesus was walking in the temple precincts in Solomon's portico, the Jews gathered round him and asked, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? Tell us plainly, are you the Messiah? I have told you, said Jesus, and you do not believe My deeds done in my Father's name are my credentials. But because you are not sheep of my flock, you do not believe. My own sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them from my care, My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of the Father's care. The Father and I are one. This is the Gospel of Christ. Father God, we thank and praise you for your word which enables us to understand more of who you are and also your calling on our lives. Help us to to discern that and to be more aware of what it is you are going to say to us this day and each day. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. I've uh, brought this um, visual aid that I've used before, um, Shepherd's Crook, and I haven't been, haven't been uh, elevated to, to become a, a bishop. Um, I would hate to be a bishop. No. no, this is going out on recording, isn't it? No. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure it's wonderful being a bishop. But, uh, but th- as I said to you before, this, this was a gift that I was given when I left uh, Coniston, and... Um, the reason it's so special is because, as you know, in Cumbria, there's a lot of sheep, more sheep than humans, even in the summer. 
Uh, and they're all over the, the fell sides, um, uh, and you, you see them wherever you go. You usually walk in their muck as well, wherever you go. Um, but this, this is special because it was actually um, one of our church members uh, uh, lived on a, a converted farm, and they were renovating the, one of the barns, and they found this crook in the barn. And, and it was a bit, in a bit of a state, so they got it cleaned up, and they gave it to me as a, a parting gift. So it was, it's special because it reminds me of Cumbria, but also it was special because it really is a shepherd's crook. It's not just one of those ones that's been made up and you can buy in, in any outdoor shop to make you think like you're a shepherd and you're going to go walking on the fells. So I, I guess it's probably been used around the sheep's necks and um, wherever else they, they put down their legs to grab hold of them. And it's very useful because... Um, you know, you've got this nice crook hook bit there, which is very good to get hold of, particularly of young lambs, but particularly when they're, they're older. Perhaps you wouldn't maybe get a lamb's head, a full-grown sheep in there. But anyway, they, they use for that. But it is a little visual aid because our reading that's just been read to us from the Gospel is all about sheep. And if you read the rest of John's uh, chapter 10, you'd see there's a lot about sheep if you went back and, and read that first bit. And, and it's very important because... Um, in, this, in one sense, um, right throughout the Bible, even in the Old Testament, and that song we just sung, uh, The Lord's My Shepherd, is written by the David, who was a shepherd, um, and saying, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, shepherds are very important because they lead their sheep. And, and uh, as I've said to you before in this church, and I've said it on many occasions in any church I've been in, we have the problem that in our country we don't understand shepherding the way it is done in um, other parts of the world because in other parts of the world shepherding is done by the the people who um, walk in front of their sheep whereas in Britain we drive the sheep nowadays with a dog and often with a quad bike but um, in, in, in the Middle East the shepherds walk in front of their sheep and the sheep follow them because they know where they're going. And so that passage that Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice and they follow me, is very significant and important. But sheep have to learn to listen and to trust the shepherd. And I wonder, how good are we, are we at listening to people? Those of us who are husbands um, will know that we're often at fault of not listening to our wives. Because if you're anything like me, you say something and um, uh, Elaine is, often catches me out by saying, what did I just say to you? <laughs> or she's been out and she's coming, did you do such and such? Eh? <laughs> I told you before I went out. We don't always listen. And, but it's not just husbands and wives, partners and so on. We don't often listen to what people say to us. We don't often give people the time to really listen and it's a real skill that I think that we're, we're losing more and more in our country um, there's this quote which I've, I've often used before I know you believe you understand what you think I said but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard wasn't what I meant how true is that we often think we understand what people say and what they mean, but they don't. And it gets even more complicated in, in social media because stuff is written and we can't see the person. I was thinking about this this morning. Um, if um, there's certain phrases which, depending on the, what you, the way you grammatically use them, when in a written text can mean something completely different. You could say with a question mark, don't, don't tell me what to do, in, in meaning, I know what, you know, let me find out for myself. Or you could say with an exclamation mark, don't tell me what to do. Same words, but mean something completely different because of the way it is said. And, and so I think there's, there's an important uh, lesson for us to really learn to listen. And I think that what Jesus is saying in, the, in this passage when he's being challenged by the, the, uh, his followers uh, or by, by the Pharisees, um, he's, he's, he says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Because he's previously said, been asked, well, come on, tell us, are you the Messiah? Are you the one that we're waiting for? 
And in that challenge, Jesus is saying effectively, look, if you really took the time to listen, you would know that I am. You would know that what I've been doing and what I've been saying points to that. And in John's gospel, we hear that challenge that he makes to those um, people. And he says to them, how long will you keep, well, sorry, they say to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? Are you the Messiah? Tell us plainly. And he says, I did tell you. If you go to the next slide, Dave, you'll see there. He says, uh, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do uh, um, in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. In other words, you're not really taking the time to both listen and also to see what I'm doing for you. And he says that, you know, if you were to listen to the rest of my teaching, and if you took a, um, if you've got a Bible um, you, the, next to that verse which um, says, I did tell you, um, there's uh, often a little letter which has got some other um, texts in it. And one of those texts is from John 4.26. This is when Jesus um, is with the woman at the well. And uh, the woman said, I know that the Messiah, that is the Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am he. So he made it quite clear to that woman in that, in that village. And then in John 5, verse 36, I testify weightier than that of John. Uh, my testimony, I testify weightier than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I am doing, testify that the Father has sent me. So he said that early on in John's gospel. And also in John 5, John 8, verse 50, 58. Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. In other words, he was saying that he is the one that was promised, the one whom they were waiting for. So the, the, the Pharisees had not really been listening to what he was doing or what he was saying. And that got me thinking about the ways in which either I do or don't listen to, to Jesus. Because there's many, many things that, that I know what the Bible says, and also I, I seek to try to understand in my own life that, that where, where things aren't always the same. Now, when I read the readings this morning, um, I read the Acts reading first, um, and I don't know why I read that first, particularly it was probably because it was first on the list out of the two readings, but I read it and I thought, oh, I'm not sure I really want to preach about that bit about Peter and Dorcas or Tabitha, because there's challenges in that, because, you know, here is Peter with this woman who has died, and he prays, Tabitha, get up. Then that's a challenge to me, because if I'm in that situation, what would I pray? And I have to admit that, that um, it's not easy to be in that position where you think, well, I know what the Bible says, but actually, have I got the faith to do what I believe I should be doing, or praying what I should be praying? And, and so, I think the link between these two readings is that Peter had spent time with Jesus, he'd seen Jesus do things, he'd been a, a, you know, witness to the resurrection of Jesus, he'd been filled with the Holy Spirit, and he was now going out to... Um, follow in his footsteps. And so when the people came to him and said, come to, to Joppa because Tabitha is unwell, and she's dying, he went without question. And when he got to the room, he entered the room, and I don't know what my thought would have been if I'd entered that room and found the situation that Peter found. Would I have asked the people to go out and prayed to the woman, Tabitha, get up. Peter, for whatever reason, which I assume was that he was in, in, in contact with God, speaking to God, praying to God, listening to God, said to Tabitha, get up. And she was healed. My thought would have been, help. God, I know you can heal and bring back to life, but I don't know that you're going to do it right now. 
However, Peter believed and he listened to Jesus. And I think that's one of the challenges that, that, that I have about this reading and, and well, both readings. Do I really listen to what Jesus is telling me? And, and, and I know that when I'm, we have in church people coming forward for prayer at the end of the service. And one of the real challenges, I think, when we are praying for people isn't just to go straight into prayer, but to spend time with this listening. Jesus, what do you want to do with this situation? And I think that very often, and this, maybe this is an admission of my failures here, that very often I jump in too quickly and don't really hear what God is saying, don't listen to what God is saying. Because surely if we were listening to the, the shepherd, to Jesus, and he was saying, pray for this person's complete healing, and we prayed for it, it would happen. And maybe sometimes Jesus says, no, that isn't what I want this person for this person. I want you to pray in this way, which is different. So my challenge this morning is, is how am I listening to the voice of the shepherd? Do I really listen? Do I, do I listen to him when I'm reading the, the, the Bible? Do I listen to him when I'm walking down the street? Do I listen to him when I'm praying with people? Do I listen to him when I'm preparing a sermon? Do I really listen to what he's saying? Or am I so constricted by what I think I believe he's saying rather than understanding what he's really saying? And just really to, to end up here, it seems to me that we've got to ask ourselves these very serious questions. Do we want to listen, first of all? Do we really want to listen to to what God is saying to us, to the voice of Jesus? And do we expect to see, because of that, miraculous things in our lives and in our worship? Or we can actually fail to listen because actually we don't really want anything to change because that could upset the status quo. It could cause us to have to do things differently. Do I, do we make space for this to happen? in our personal lives and in our worship. And when we do hear the voice of Jesus, whether it's a thought, whether it's from scripture, whether it's an impression, do we act upon it? Believing that this is God's voice and the miraculous will happen. One of the things that um, uh, I think I first heard through Alpha was, um, it was all about listening to God's voice. And one of the things that um, uh, the speaker, which I think was Nikki Gumbel, Gumbel was saying at the time, was whenever his wife phones him up, she doesn't have to say, hello, Nikki, this is Pippa. She knows immediately that it's Pippa, just by the voice that speaks. And when you know somebody really well, you recognize their voice. And I think part of the issue is we, we don't spend enough time recognizing what it is and who it is that's speaking to us. Because we perhaps don't spend, and I perhaps uh, and challenge that I need to spend more time really listening to what God is saying. Sometimes when you're driving in a car, you've got the radio on, and you get to a, an area where the reception isn't good, and it goes <laughs> and cuts in and out. I don't know about you, but I find that really frustrating. And you perhaps got to retune to what is the nearest radio mast. It's not quite the same with DAB radios now as they seem to do it automatically sometimes. But the fact is that you've got to be tuned, you've got to make sure you're in tune with, with what God wants, with what the radio I is receiving. And that's the same true for us, perhaps as we go down a road where the reception isn't good because we're going away from God or we're not keeping close to the receptor. And I want to encourage us to listen to God's voice more in our worship, to spend more time in our individual lives and in our gatherings, being aware of God speaking to us. And one of the things that, that I'm gonna be over these next three months when I'm on sabbatical is that I want to intentionally give time to listening more to God. Because in the busyness of life, and you all have it, in the busyness of life, 
we crowd out and we have the other voices coming in, taking priority instead of the voice of God, the voice of Jesus. So as we think about Jesus saying, my sheep listen to my voice and they follow me, what is that saying to you, to me, to us as a church? How well are we listening to the voice of our shepherd? Amen. As we just spend a bit of time reflecting, let's, uh, we're going to sing a song, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. might in this song just want to listen to the words, um, reflect on the words. What is it that God is saying to you, to us? Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them
So, Lord, we just ask that you would take us as we are. You would help us to give you space to listen to what it is you say to us, whether it's spending time just not watching the telly or whether it's spending time just in quiet reflection, whether it's when we're out on a walk, whether it's even in the busyness of our daily lives. Enable us to find ways in which we can give you space and we can really listen to your voice. For when we do, Father, and when we follow what you call us to do, we can expect incredible things. In Jesus' name, amen. Our f creed is one of those things which reminds us that we have a faith that is based on uh, history, based on beliefs that have been passed down to us, but a belief that has stood the test of time. So if you're willing and able to, should we stand and say these words together? Let us speak out what we believe. We believe and trust in God the Father Almighty. We believe and trust in Jesus, his, his Son. We believe and trust in the Holy Spirit. We believe and trust in God, the three in one. Amen. Please be seated. Um, quite a few notices this morning, so um, please listen. <laughs> uh, as you came in, you were given um, a sheet like this. Um, it would be a great help if you could complete these before you leave. Um, either, either here in church, it only take about two or three minutes just to, to, to go through it, uh, or in, in, across it it's, um, when you're having coffee. Um, this is part of the Health for Growth program that we're doing. Um, some, a group of us are doing, and it's just to, to the, each, um, this one is about a, a intoxicating vision. Um, it helps us to understand as we go to the next session, uh, really a bit of a temperature of, of, of where the church is and, and what things we may, need, we may need to work on. So if you, would, if you could do this, it, 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 you don't have to, to put your name on it, it just says the name of the church, but don't even have to have the name of the church because we know you're you're from St. Andrews, but uh, if you could just do that very briefly and, and uh, leave it for us, that would be great because we've got a meeting tomorrow night um, to uh, think about that, or not just that, but other things. Tonight, um, and it's not the first Sunday in May, last Sunday was the first Sunday in May, but I forgot that, even though it was the first of May. Um, but tonight is going to be praise, praise and prayer in the hall if you want to join us at half past six for an hour. Um, so it's um, praise and prayer on the first but the second, if you know what I mean. So please do join us for that. And um, the church, um, for the last two years, hasn't able to, been able to be opened for the open days that, that we, we, we're required to, to um, hold because of the funding that we got through uh, um, the National Lottery, Heritage Lottery. So, um, but th we are going to start that up again this year, but it's the last year this year because our funding um, a requirement to do that is only for 10 years and that ends in January. So, um, Alan has got about uh, 13 volunteers. It would be great if we could have about five or six more just to mean that uh, it, it's not so pressured on those, those 13. So, if you are able to help just for this, you know, it won't be every week. Um, uh, it will be sort of on, on a rotor basis. If you're able to offer a morning or an afternoon, is that right, Alan? Yeah. A morning or an afternoon, just for a couple of hours, on Wednesdays, then can you let Alan know? Um, just put your hand up, Alan. 
the Alan there, yeah. So let him know, um, so we can we can have a. Um, if you've got some time on a Wednesday, just to keep the church open. And although um, the, we don't get a, a great rush of people coming in, people do come regularly, um, just to, just to pop into church, either to to have a look at it or just for a bit of peace and quiet, a bit of space to pray. So uh, if you could let Alan know. Now, Ascension Day is in a couple of weeks' time, on the Thursday, the 26th of May, and uh, our, our tradition um, has been, although we haven't for the last two years, but certainly um, uh, previous to that, we had a joint service at Sadburge. And so there is going to be a joint service at 6 p.m. at Sadburge, um, and then there's going to be a pie and peace supper afterwards. If you would like to go to that, there's a list at the back of the church to sign up on, but there's also a list because um, uh, they, they provide the pie and peas, but we provide the puds. So if you would like to sign up on the list to bring a pud, that would be good. So the list at the back of the church for that. Um, Queen's Jubilee weekend. Um, I'm going to say something and then I'm going to ask Kath to come up and say something. Um, on the Queen's Jubilee weekend, which is, is on the 3rd to the 5th of June, on the Sunday the 5th, we're having a, a bring and share meal after church in the hall. And again, there's, there's lists at the back if you'd like to come to that, and also if you would be able to bring something. And it's what's called a structured bring and share, so we're not going to get everybody bringing a salad. There are different things that we'll have, different ideas of what people could bring. So can you sign up on those lists? So that's on Sunday the 5th of June. Um, and it will be after the morning service, so 12 o'clock-ish. And then, Kath, do you want to say something about what's happening in, in Horton Village? Yeah, come up here, that would be good, and use the microphone. And you, you may well be in some of your roads, streets, having things going on, but um, there is something happening particularly on the green here in Horton. Yeah, some of you have been invited. So I'm saying some of you because there are at 20 places available to go to the Horton Road Street Party. So it's going to be held, I think, somewhere, um, obviously, in the, 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 the um, what do you call it, the access road part of... Um, the, yeah, by, so by, opposite, by the, opposite the yeah. post office and, yeah. and near where uh, Mark is. Um, it's actually from one o'clock... So you could come to the, our party here um, that's going on, starting at 12. And if you were a real party animal, you could follow it on from one o'clock at the, um, the Jubilee party here in, in Horton Road. So it's been arranged by the same people who have organised the, um, the tree lights. Um, and as I say, they're, um, unfortunately, they can't all organise for everyone to come. They're, they're actually planning for 100 people to come. And we've been um, asked if um, 20 people or less would actually come to the party, you can imagine. So I do have these slips available. They want to know um, if you'd like to attend, because obviously some of them they're just pushing through their local um, letterboxes. Um, if you would like to help, if you'd like to do some baking for it. Um, and the number of people that um, are likely to attend. So I've got slips for that, so if you'd like to take a slip, um, I've, I've probably got about 20 slips, um, but that will mean that if there's a couple of you or, you know, or if you've got children and you're bringing your children along, then obviously. If you can also let me know, then I can update um, Kath Warden or um, Paula O'Brien from up at the other end of the green. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And then one final notice, which is um, last weekend we had a compassion speaker, Adrian Turk, who, who talked about the work of compassion, and quite a lot of people responded to, to sponsor a child. Um, there are about four, he's, he's left four, four um, bits of information. If, if you're interested in sponsoring a child, and it costs about £28 a month, um, and then, then do please, they're at the back of the church, have a look at them and um, I think, are there some envelopes, did some envelopes arrive? It's not yet. 
Not yet. They will, if you, if, you have, if, you, if you do want to sponsor a child, if you give it into the office, and then when the envelopes arrive, we can send them off together. Okay, so they're just on the, the uh, chest um, uh, at the back, um, behind the, the PA where Dave is. So that's it. That's, um, and um, they'll be there for you to, to have a look at. And Mike, I think you're going to lead us in some prayers of intercession, aren't you? Oh, yes. Oh, the band, sorry, yeah. Come, come up there. Thank you, thank you. My par parish administrator is reminding me that I've got some bands to read, which is good. And very important. Uh, a, a legal requirement. So we have three sets of bands to read. These are all for the second time of asking. I published the bands of marriage between Ryan Hodgson, single of the parish of St. Clair and Newt Naycliffe, and also Victoria Elizabeth Cooper, also single of the parish of St. Clair and Newt Naycliffe, but they have qualifying connection here in St. Andrews, in the parish. Between Shada Smith, single of the parish of St. John's, and Sophie Jane Man Manson, single also of the parish of, or single of the parish of St. James, but they regularly worship here at St. Andrews. And Gary Wilson, and Laura MacArthur, both from this parish. So these are for the second time of asking. If any of you know a reason why these persons should not be joined together in, in, in marriage, you are to declare it now. So let's pray for these three couples. Father God, we, we thank you that uh, we can find people to commit our lives to. We pray for Ryan and Victoria, Shada and Sophie and Gary and Laura, Laura. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them in their marriage plans and particularly, Lord, in their married life. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we've been uh, thinking about listening. Do we want to listen? Do we listen? And what do we do when we hear things? Do we understand? In these prayers, I'm not going to ask you to respond with words. I'm going to ask you to listen. Listen to what God might be saying to you. And if you feel you can, if I use the word me or I, could you make this your personal prayer? Come, Holy Spirit, and speak to us through these prayers. Let's pause and be still and be quiet. And first of all, bring to God the thing or the person or situation that we most want to thank him for. Let's thank God now in our hearts something we want to say thank you for. Open my mind again, Father, to new horizons and new experiences. Fill me again today like you once filled me before with your Holy Spirit.
Father, show me how I can share your love with someone I know living in darkness. Show me how I can share the peace you have given me with someone living in fear. Show me how I can share the joy of loving you with someone who is living in sorrow. And Father, although we've prayed these prayers individually, we ask you to unite us all as one family, your children sharing our lives together. Help us, we pray, to see Jesus in each other and to do Jesus' work in our relationships with each other. Loving Father God, Help us to see how we can each play our part in your plan so that broken people find healing. Lonely people find love. The bitter find peace. And so that fearful people find hope in you. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our lives more and more each day in everything that we are and everything that we do and everything that we say. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand as we share the peace? <clears throat> as we prepare to gather, although not physically gather around the table, as we prepare to share in what God has given for us, we remind ourselves that we are called to be at one with him. And whilst we, we are discouraging people from uh, moving too much, uh, I'm sure you can demonstrate that you want to share God's peace with others. God has made us one in Christ. He has set us a seal up, he set his seal upon us as a pledge of what is to come. He has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let us offer to one another a sign of his peace. Peace be with you.
And as we gather around this table, uh, we remind ourselves we have a chalice to remind us of the blood that was shed by Jesus, but we're not sharing the chalice at the moment. And we have the wafers to remind us of his bread that was broken. And so during this communion, um, I will co be coming to you to, to bring uh, the wafers. If you would like to receive a, uh, the, the, the wafer as a way of recognizing your commitment to be a follower of Jesus, then do please just put your hand out. If you want to just to have a blessing, then if you keep your hands down, I can pray for a blessing. But this is an open table where we want people who want to be followers of Jesus to continue to listen to him and to follow his voice. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave us your son Jesus to be our saviour. His dying and rising has set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, we sit or kneel to pray. Please take note of the pause after the fourth line. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your Son. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
We also do have gluten-free wafers, so if you do need a gluten-free wafer, do please indicate that to me when I come to give them out.
Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who, may we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Before we go on our way, we're going to sing a wonderful closing hymn, In Christ Alone My Hope Is Found. Oh, 
in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's but from till final breath, Jesus has won my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever touch me from his hands till I am his and he be home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. No power of And so as we prepare to go our way, whether to coffee, which you're welcome to join us for, or tea, uh, or if it's to other, other commitments you've got today, we go knowing that we are uh, going in God's name, and we also go knowing that we have received from him and are prepared to share our gifts to others. And we offer these gifts here as a token of our thankfulness, as well as those that have been paid in through backs and other ways into the bank accounts, and ourselves remembering that we are all part of God's service because of his gift to us. So, Father God, we thank you that you are a gracious and a generous God. We offer ourselves and these gifts as a token of our thankfulness to be used for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. amen. And remember to listen to his voice and follow his way because he's the way maker.
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Oh, that is who 